the Federal Reserve has raised the rates of more than 2% since the beginning of the year to fight the inflation. Now, this has had the impact to cause a major contraction in the entire economy, which has been felt pretty hard in the stock market and in the real estate market. Well, no worries. In this video, you will find why the recession are the best wealth creation tools and how you can use this massive opportunity to create some insane wealth for the future. But first, talking about a recession, many people are getting scared just from hearing the word. But what is a recession? According to definition, a recession comes when we face two quarters consecutively of negative growth in the GDP. And with this metric, we could understand that the US economy has officially entered into a recession since the summer of 2022. However, a good news for some people and a bad news for others is that the recession lasts on average about 17 months, which equal to about one year and a half. And with this hypothesis, that means that we could finally see the end of a recession technically at the end of 2023. However, what we usually see with recession is that a lot of different workers are losing their jobs since the economy is struggling a lot and the businesses are not generating as much revenue and profits than before. But we've seen in many different countries around the world that we have a massive problem of labor shortage. That means that for the first time, we could see a potential recession without a massive layoff of the employees. That means that the employees should keep their job normally and be able to sustain all their different basic needs. However, since the economy will be struggling a lot in the upcoming years, that means that many small businesses will potentially go to bankruptcy. And so all these workers that are working for those companies will lose their job. But because of the needs in the market, they will potentially be able to find another job in the same domain. Another problem that we currently live in that impacts everyone is that the inflation is not going down as much as predicted, even if we've seen some major raise in the rates from the Fed to counter this inflation. Knowing the fact that the Fed has a target of between 1% to 3% of inflation per year, knowing that we are currently sitting on about 7% of inflation, we are pretty far from this objective. Obviously, this problem was mainly caused by the pandemic, but now we might have to face a slow growth in the GDP and a slow growth in the economy for the next couple of years. And this could put us in a way worse situation, which is called a depression. Basically, it could be seen as a recession during three or more years, which eventually lead to a massive decline in the GDP. So this would be the worst case scenario, but we've seen that in 2008, when we faced the huge economic crash, this was not even considered as a depression since we've seen only two years of recession. But we've seen that after 2008, it has took a lot of time to the market to come back at the place that it was before the crash. This just means that we will not see some high exponential growth like we've seen in 2020 to 2022, but we will see some slow growth in the next couple of years. And I really hope that the Fed will not raise the rates too fast because it could cause a massive panic on the market. Especially since in the 21st of September, the Fed is supposed to talk and announce a new increase in the rates. And this new increase is supposed and predicted to be about 0.75%. And this information has been reflected on the market today as I'm recording this video, the 20th of September, where we have seen that the general market has been going down. So what does it mean for us small investors? Well, since a recession means that people will have less money in their pocket compared to other periods like between between 2020 and 2022, that means that there will be less liquidity in the market and so there will be less growth also in the stock market and in the crypto market. On your side, you have two options. One, you can go in your corner and cry for two or three years and wait until the market is up and so you'll be able to invest at the top. Or two, you can decide to invest with consistency and buy all those different stocks and ETFs that have some massive discounts, which obviously could create to you a massive wealth base for the future. The good news is that the market is already pricing what is the future events that should happen on the market. And for many months now, we've seen that the stock market price has been reflecting this 
current information that we know. And this is why we've seen some massive losses on the market in general since the beginning of the year. But the most important thing that you should keep in mind when you invest is to always keep your cold blood. Especially in these tumultuous time, people tend to invest emotionally. Emotional investing comes from the fact that people tend to undervalued what is the market and what are their knowledge and so they are usually buying at the top and they are selling at the bottom. This could definitely be the biggest threat for the retail investors. And especially in those recession times, we've seen some high volatility so that there are some high risk on the market, people should keep in mind that investing with consistency is always the best thing that you could do. And with the labor shortage in many different countries, people will keep their job and be able to sustain all their different needs, meaning that they will still have some money to potentially invest. And now it's going to be the time to do the right decision. With the raise of the rates, the goal behind it is to raise the cost of borrowing. This obviously has the goal to slow the general economy, but in your personal case, that means that if you want to borrow, for example, if you want to buy your first house with your mortgage, for example, you'll pay some way higher interest. So you'll need to be very careful with the money that you have and spend it very wisely. And in finance in general, when you increase the rates, usually the price of things are usually going down. So you might have some potential opportunities, especially on the real estate market that will come in the upcoming years. But for your employer, it also means that he might have some problem and some difficulties to give you a raise in your salary. So learning how to do budgeting and how to make your own budget will be a need and a must for you. So you'll be able to see what are the places where you could save up a little bit more money. And to do that, obviously, make sure to join the North family where I'll be able to give you some great budgeting tips. But you need to keep in mind that recessions are usually representing some massive opportunities for the people that have some cash. And if you know me, you know that I always keep a certain buffer of my net worth in cash. Obviously this is for my personal expenses and also for all my different emergency funds. But since I don't have any big expenses at the moment, I will definitely use a certain part of this buffer and reinvest it in the stock market. On your side, however, if you are a single mom and you have three kids to feed, it might not be the best decision to use all of your buffer and all of your emergency fund to invest it. But in any case, everyone should find ways to generate or even to save more money to be able to invest more in the stock market, especially right now when the stock market is down more than 15% at the moment year to date. So how do I personally prepare myself to face this big recession? Well, as I told you, I plan to consistently invest each and every single month into the stock market, but also potentially in the crypto market. And even if the value of my portfolio is slightly decreasing, I will continue to buy what I think are the best option for me and I will not panic sell. So I'm really trying to find what are the most undervalued stock that have the best potential of growth and also the best ETF at the moment. If I would decide to invest in penny stocks, for example, that would be way more risky, especially in this time. In fact, those penny stocks are usually the smallest companies that are available on the stock market, which means that they have so much risk compared to the big companies that are offering, for example, some stable dividend. But the best way to invest in my opinion is always to invest in ETFs which are basically a basket of many hundred of stocks that you could invest with only one ticker. And this gives me some great potential return but also it reduces massively the risk of my portfolio. And guys let me know in the comment section what are you doing in those times of high inflation and with the recent news of the hike of the rates. And if you're currently having some difficulties with your financial situation and that you would like to find some ways to save more money you can check out the video is going to be right over here that will give you the best money saving tips that you can apply right now. And guys, make sure to join the North family by subscribing to the channel for only $0.0. .0. We'll see you soon. Peace.